Hello and welcome to another conversation with Hash Pakistan. Today we will be discussing and exploring the avenues for collaboration between uh, Pakistan and the UAE. And for that we have with us Mohammad Riaz. Uh, Mohammad Riaz is currently working as a general manager at GBM, um, UM, UCMC Dubai and North Emirates. GBM expands over um, the application network, uh, infrastructure and security solutions, serving clients across all industries such as banking, government, telco, retail, healthcare and hospitality. Um, Mohammad Riaz is a client-focused executive with strong relationships and proven delivery records in cloud transformation and enterprise performance across, in, across the industries mentioned. Um, he also holds expertise in transformation and change, cloud system implementation, and migration with AWS, SAP, Microsoft, and IBM. Um, he has won uh, several IT and cloud consulting engagements in Europe, Middle East, and Africa. And his formula for success is building deep client relationships and support, uh, which are supported by leading consulting offerings that drive value for his clients. Um, his leadership and professional experience also spans across continents, including Asia, Africa, Europe, and the US. And we are extremely excited to be learning um, from his experience today. So hello to everybody who is watching us today. Um, today's conversation is surrounding um, the topic of exploring avenues for collaboration between uh, Pakistan and the UAE. And we have with us Mohammad Riaz. Um, so I will quickly jump to the first question um, and talk. I want to hear a little more from you about how most recently Pakistan and the UAE have, been, um, have released a joint statement in which they've been talking about um, how they're committed to strengthening their bilateral ties and um, you know for the economic prosperity of both countries so where do you see this relationship heading in the next few years so uh, thank you so much for uh, you know giving me this opportunity to be at the uh, at the hatch uh, platform uh, you know very very happy to uh, you know um, get uh, the opportunity to uh, talk about you know the uh, collaboration between uh, pakistan and and uae uh, these are two, uh, you know, brethren countries that uh, goes back uh, from when UAE was founded and have a long history together and uh, and have a long future together as well. So, uh, you know, it's it's always been a very tight collaboration between UAE as well as as Pakistan when it comes to you know multiple assets. You know, I, I'll give you an example. Uh, back um, in the days when uh, Emirates Airlines was launched. Uh, Pakistan and especially you know PAA uh, was uh, was helping in that launch, and um, you know you we we see the success of uh, Emirates Airlines today, and it's something that we can all be very proud of having you know helped uh, set the foundation for such a strong brand and such a strong airline. So so it always goes uh, hand in hand when when you know we help each other and i think there's a lot of experience and know-how that's been built in the uae in the last probably two decades for which i believe uh, you know uh, pakistan uh, can learn from uh, same way as you know uae learned from pakistan in, in in earlier times so this collaboration will will continue and it's about you know finding the right spots and the most recent discussions has been um, around energy, of course, it's about, you know, um, a supply chain, uh, logistics, as well as, you know, the new technology and the new skill sets that's evolving in the market. So I'm very confident that this relationship will continue uh, uh, together for a long, long time, and uh, we will help each other uh, in, in the best way forward. Absolutely. So um, in terms of, uh, you know, technology specifically, we've seen in the past few years, there's been a technology revolution. Um, and although Pakistan has been um, taking up on that, but it's been relatively slow. So, uh, but we've seen the UAE, you know, do wonders when it comes to that. We've seen even in terms of um, the tourist attraction that they've been able to kind of do because of that. And, you know, Abu Dhabi and Dubai have become hubs for people around the world. So what do you think Pakistan can learn from UAE in that domain? I think there's a lot you can learn from from uh, UAE. I think uh, the the very first thing is that it's important to have a vision uh, as a, as a nation, as a country, 
uh, I think uh, UAE has a very uh, you know far reach uh, vision in terms of being uh, the best place uh, to live and stay uh, in the world. And you know from that vision, you know everything else uh, drills down. Uh, it, it's a vision that's supported by the UAE leadership team across all the Emirates, and then you know the 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 the, the different um, initiatives are then rolled down. What we have seen in the UAE is, especially during the recent pandemic, that how strong they have been in responding to some of the challenges that came about. Uh, whether it is about you know um, having a well organized healthcare system, having a very strong infrastructure that could cope with some of these challenges, and which quickly made UAE one of the countries in the world to respond in the best possible manner and minimize the impact on our economy. So I, I believe there's a lot of lessons learned that, you know, UE has been, uh, you know, leading in terms of, you know, um, both adopting and, and as well as building, you know, it's the, it's the healthcare system, it is the infrastructure, it is, you know, working with the new technology platform. We saw a economy, an online economy that just had a significant boost. We had a, you know, co-working, uh, uh, you know, um, platforms that was adopted immediately so the work could be continuing. So there was a number of, of uh, you know, uh, technology as well as infrastructure uh, uh, initiatives that was already built up, but then got accelerated during the pandemic, which made, you know, UAE uh, uh, one of the best places uh, to be in. And it is it is going to, you know, build on, on that. So plenty of, of great experiences that Pakistan can leverage. Absolutely. And we've, um, we've also seen that I think UAE hosts over 2 million Pakistani uh, residents right now at, at the moment. And that is, you know, growing every day. And there are a lot more people who are very willing and hoping to, you know, migrate to the UAE in search of a better standard of living or just better job opportunities um, as the Pakistani market currently is not doing as well as we all know. So what advice, you know, would you give these people who are really hoping to explore other industries in the UAE or just explore the, the job market overall? I think, you know, I, I would uh, call myself a, a global citizen. You know, I have uh, spent uh, a, a lot of uh, my lifetime in Europe and then uh, having worked um, at IBM for uh, more than two decades, I got the opportunity to travel around the world across all countries. And then the last decade I've spent here in this Middle East region and, you know, having lived in, in the UAE. What is really uh, fantastic is that, you know, the world and the skill sets uh, is being uh, attracted across the world. So, you know, even 10 years ago or 20 years ago, you know, a lot of the skills were not marketable outside of your country. So if you had a skill set, you know, you could only utilize it in your city or in your, you know, in your uh, country. It couldn't be uh, something that could be utilized across the world. That has significantly changed. I would say it's, it's probably one of the most dramatic changes that we saw during the pandemic, right? So my encouragement to, to both the, um, the, the young talent, uh, you know, living in Pakistan, looking to work abroad, First of all, it is to make sure that, you know, you get uh, some of the skills that's in demand, right? And IT skills is in high demand. So make sure that, you know, you, you, you practice, you know, you get your certifications uh, in, in these technology uh, areas. And then from there on, you know, there is now many ways that you can, you know, either provide your skills and services remotely or, you know, come into the market. And, because, uh, you know, there is very positive experience of talent and skills coming from, you know, Pakistan or, you know, East Asia in general. Uh, I think, you know, that that uh, hurdle is completely removed for people who want to move here. Right. I mean, people understand the, the, the culture, the values that, you know, you bring uh, from uh, Pakistan. Uh, you know, it's very much respected. UAE as a country is a country of um, of dialogue, of you know collaboration. Uh, you know uh, all all cultures, all religions are are being respected. So I think it's a really good opportunity for our young talents to you know embark on careers. But I encourage them not to wait till you know you land uh, you know in the country, but 
start engaging as early as possible with the potential employers. Absolutely. Uh, and so, you know, we've talked about the IT industry specifically, and of course we, you know, globally are uh, experiencing or living through an IT boom. But um, what would you have to say about, um, you know, knowledge sharing between the two countries in the other industries? So you mentioned healthcare briefly, um, you know, even agriculture or infrastructure or education specifically, you know, we've, we've recently also seen a lot of um, uh, young talent from Pakistan now going to the UAE for their higher education or just their undergraduate studies. So what are other avenues for knowledge sharing that can be explored? No, I think, uh, yeah, look, there is a lot of uh, industries that are, uh, you know, global industries. You look at the uh, uh, industry like uh, healthcare, which is a very eminent industry, you know, when, when we were hit by this pandemic, you know, you needed the same set of skills across the world, right? You, you needed nurses, you needed doctors. And that's a field where I believe, you, you know, the knowledge sharing can be, uh, can be uh, utilized. So some of the experiences we had in Pakistan in terms of containing this uh, virus spread, you know, could be shared uh, with, with, with the likewise counterparts in, in the UAE. Another industry which is a great example is the energy sector. You know, energy sector is under a huge, uh, you know, I would say um, transformation, the requirements of being more sustainable, more energy friendly. Uh, you know, UAE being one of the leading, uh, you know, countries in the energy sector. Um, there's a lot of initiatives going on. How can you optimize? How can you efficiently, uh, you know, build uh, out, you know, energy infrastructure, or you can even maintain the infrastructure that you have. And we know that energy is a, a scarce resource in Pakistan. And I know one of the areas of collaboration between UAE and Pakistan is in the energy sector. A third in, uh, industry is banking. And I think banking is one of the industries that is under the most dramatic, you know, uh, I would say transformation uh, with the digital banking uh, coming up with, you know, the whole digital currencies being being embarked on. Again, an area where UAE is, is leading, uh, you know, it's a hub for many, many innovative companies that's working across banking uh, industry. And I think uh, we've got a large, uh, you know, banking sector in Pakistan, where again, you know, we 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 could see a lot of good collaboration and and helping. At the same time, uh, we also have a telco in industry, which I believe is extremely competitive and and very advanced in Pakistan because there is a very strong competition, and you need to build and and innovate and create new value added services which could then reversely be, be shared and, you know, maybe uh, uh, brought uh, to the UE market from some of the people who have that knowledge in the telco industry. So I think across all the industries, there would be some industries where, you know, the, uh, the, the innovation and the technology adoption is very advanced in the UAE. And likewise in Pakistan that, you know, you could create that, uh, that collaboration. Absolutely. Um, so, you know, just playing devil's advocate for a minute, a lot of people when we, specifically people in Pakistan, when we talk about, um, you know, there are a lot of, uh, my, there are a lot of people who want to migrate to the UAE, to the UK, to the US, they raise a question about brain drain, right? They talk about how this local talent needs to stay in Pakistan in order for us to excel as an economy. So if our local talent is going elsewhere, you know, what are we going to do? So what would you say to, to them? Well, I, because I've been living in this global world, uh, you, you know, I think um, we have to accept that, you know, the best talent will always, uh, you know, try to and will be attracted by where the, the leading innovation is, right, where the best opportunity is. I don't think you can stop that. It is not just a, a phenomenon that we see in Pakistan that, you know, talent is, is leaving for, for better opportunities. It is, a, it is a global element. I think what's important for Pakistan as a country is to establish, you know, uh, platforms, to establish, you know, uh, knowledge hubs, to establish innovation hubs where we will be able to attract uh, the young talent, you know, keep them there, then help them, you know, uh, establish and build, you know, some of their ideas and then bring that to the rest of the world. I think that's the best way to keep some of the talent in country rather than you know, going abroad. However, you know, I also see that the people that are 
trained or has you know had careers outside of Pakistan, I, I know they're always uh, available to help and support you know uh, the um, the young people, the young talent back in their own countries. Uh, why uh, I think it's not just about trying to stop. Uh, talent moving out, but it's also about, you know, how do we bring that experience and that know-how, which has been built by a lot of senior, you know, uh, talent that is the country, how can you bring that back? And I think that's another uh, topic, Hatch maybe pick up and find out how do we then capture, you know, as you mentioned, there's more than 2 million people in the UAE, there's a lot of knowledge and skills there doesn't need to move back to Pakistan to be able to, you know, share and give back, but it could be something the virtual world could uh, support. And how do we do that best? Um, and, you know, that brings to my mind um, how we have in Pakistan specifically, when we're talking about innovation, most recently, as you might know, there, the startup ecosystem in Pakistan has, you know, uh, witnessed a great great um you know just boom overall we see so many young people we see we have seen uh, national incubation centers uh, you know come up we've seen a lot of government initiatives also supporting these young entrepreneurs who are now really coming up with you know real-time solutions for a lot of the problems that we're facing be it um, in edtech or fintech or um, you know even health as well so do you think um in your experience in the uae has you know, is there anything that we can learn from the UAE startup ecosystem? Because we've seen like co-working is one thing that's been on a, a you know, been a recent trend and, and Pakistan is slowly also really following um, that trend as well. So what would you say to the, you know, those people in that industry? Yeah, I think there's a lot we can, uh, we, we can learn, especially helping the startup, you know, the entrepreneurship there are a number of uh, startup, uh, you know, hubs here that is encouraging companies. Even at the government level, you know, there is a lot of uh, initiatives that's been launched where they want young companies to, you know, come with new ideas. Uh, UAE has become a hub for a lot of the the new digital world. Uh, you know, most recently there has been a new uh, law that was issued, um, you know, in in Dubai, which is called the uh, Virtual Asset Registry. Uh, you know, authority, which is about, you know, the NFTs, you know, the cryptocurrency, you know, the metaverse. So, so you would see that UAE is always ahead in terms of, you know, adopting, you know, the latest technologies. And I think that is partly because they have an ecosystem of young startup that, you know, experiment with some of these new technologies. And there is a large industry that is then willing to, you know, take on some of these, uh, you know, new uh, innovations that being built locally as well. So, so, so it's not just about having a lot of young startup, but you need to have an industry that is also, you know, willing to, you know, take on uh, some of those innovations and a government that is then building frameworks around it, because otherwise it is quite difficult to really get it to scale. So I think there's a lot of great examples. You know, um, one of the things that um, uh, we do in, in our own company here at uh, GBM is that, you know, we always try to, you know, get young talent involved and engaged in, in, in bringing some of these new ideas. And that talent can come, you know, from the institutions, but it could come from startups. So I, I think it's, it's important in Pakistan as well that we get the industry and the entrepreneurial hubs to work together much more. Absolutely. And I think without collaboration, that is just, you know, not, not uh, that won't reach the potential that it truly can. Um, exactly. You know, my last question to you is just about, uh, you know, your personal career, you have, you know, in a very short amount of time done great, you, you know, you've been all around the world, as you were mentioning, and your expertise specifically with, you know, um, uh, cloud consulting engagements and IT sector specifically. So, Somebody who is watching us right now and is wanting to learn from you and your experience, um, you know, what would you say? Somebody, let's say, who's very young, fresh out of, uh, you know, undergrad, how would, what guidance would you give them? Well, I, I would say that, uh, you know, um, they should really uh, enjoy themselves. You know, they are uh, very early in their life. They've got the whole, you know, world and the future in front of them. It's very important that, you know, you, you set some goals. Um, you know, the advice that I give a lot of our, um, our, our uh, colleagues, uh, as well as, you know, uh, young people is uh, don't wait for someone to tell you what to do. 
you should try to make up your own plan. That's the one advice that I would give. I, we, we tend sometimes to um, just keep doing the same and the same and waiting for someone to tell us that, that, well, you know, it seems like you're good at that this field here, whether you're a good developer or you're a good marketeer or, you know, you're a good architect or you're a good project manager. And then this is the next thing you should be doing. In my career, I um, I did not wait for someone to come and tell me, uh, you know, what would uh, what would be good. You know, I would always look around, look for the opportunities, and and go and try to achieve those. Right. So that's my encouragement to young people that you know make sure that you you enjoy, but also make sure you set some goal and make a plan yourself and reach out and um, having a mentor, you know, having a coach. Um, is something I, I can highly recommend because that would give you some insights and some knowledge, which is very difficult to, to find around. And I hope again that, uh, you know, that's where I have offered my support and help for any young people looking for, for someone that can mentor and coach them, you know, uh, with, the, with the Hatch Network uh, to, to facilitate that. Um, I think that would uh, support um, a lot of young people in a, in a, in a great, bright uh, future. Uh, I really think that um, with some of the recent developments, especially in technical skills in Pakistan, I think, I think we are building a great platform. Um, I think the world is flat, um, the world is small, uh, and, and the, and the uh, opportunities are, are, you know, unlimited. So it's about, you know, putting your focus and, you know, just reaching out. Absolutely. And we are so happy to have you on board as a mentor. So you can really, you know, uh, pass your wisdom on and guidance to more um, uh, youngsters who are trying to enter this field. So thank you so much for your time um, and your guidance as well. And we hope to continue these conversations in the future. My pleasure. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you, Michelle.